welcome back to my channel. My name's Marnie and today I'm going to be talking about a case that is sort of based on true crime but could also be a bit paranormal at the same time. So if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, definitely keep watching. <laughs> Nine-year-old Charles Peck worked for Delta Airlines. He was actually considering leaving his job in Salt Lake City for a job at an LA airport because this would allow him to be closer to his fiance, and his fiance was called Andrea Katz. And he had got an interview for this new job in LA. So he packed his bags, he got on a train, and he made his way to go to his interview. His girlfriend, Andrea, actually lived in LA, so this would be a win-win for both of them if Charles got this job. They would be able to be closer, their relationship would probably be better off, and I'm sure there were some personal reasons for Charles wanting to change the location of his job besides his relationship as well. Andrea Katz was on her way to pick Charles up from the train station when she heard the news of an accident on the radio. Charles Peck her boyfriend and her fiance was a passenger on a Metrolink commuter train that was traveling through the San Fernando Valley in California on September 12th, 2008. This train collided headfirst with a Union Pacific freight train at 83 miles an hour when the conductor failed to stop at a red light. The impact was devastating and of the 225 people aboard the Metrolink at least 25 of them died and more than a hundred were seriously injured. The disaster later became known as the Chatsworth train crash and is still to this day considered to be one of the worst commuter train accident stories in the history of California. So that just goes to show you the scale of this accident. Andrea heard about the crash on the radio as she was driving to pick up Charles from the station and of course she was worried about whether Charles was okay. But her concerns faded when she received a phone call from Charles's phone. Other friends and family members of Katz also received phone calls from Charles. After the crash, Charles called his son, his sister, his brother, his stepmother, and of course his fiance, Andrea. All in all, about 35 calls were made in the 11 hours that followed the crash and according to one source that I found online the final call from Charles Peck's phone came at 3 28 a.m. At first Charles's friends and family were excited when they saw that his name was popping up on their phone and he was calling them. As the calls continued to come in they had hope that Charles was still alive and maybe he was trapped in the rubble of the crash and was just trying to call out for help. Unfortunately, none of the friends or family members that Charles called were able to actually speak to him. When they answered his calls, all they could hear was a kind of static noise. And when they tried to call back, the calls just went straight to voicemail. However, Andrea used this opportunity to try and communicate with her fiancé and to let him know that she was still with him. She would shout messages of encouragement, like, hang in there, we're going to get you out, and you're going going to be okay. Before these calls, rescue workers didn't believe that they were going to find anybody alive in the crash, and they focused their efforts just on recovering bodies. However, when the calls started to come in from Charles's phone, rescuers decided to refocus their efforts to try and find Charles, and to do this, they started to trace his phone. And although the rescue teams and the friends and family were really optimistic that the phone calls might have meant that Charles was still alive, unfortunately that just wasn't the case. An hour after Charles's last phone call was placed, rescuers found Charles's body. And this is where it gets a bit strange. According to anecdotal sources like forums and unsolved mystery sites, the coroner that looked at Charles's body was unable to find any signs that he had survived 
past the point of impact in the crash. Meaning that he probably died instantly and sort of confirming that Charles probably didn't make these calls. And although rescue workers were able to locate Charles's body, his phone was never found. So who made the calls? Well, there are a number of theories going around about what could have happened to Charles and how these phone calls could have been made. So I'm going to go through them a bit. Anyone who has ever done a butt dial knows it is possible to make a phone call accidentally. Perhaps an object was just sitting on Charles's phone causing it to make random calls. And it's also possible that the rescue crew were moving parts of the wreckage in their efforts to try and locate survivors and were potentially shifting pieces of debris that could have been resting on the phone in such a way that it would cause it to make phone calls. The phone was most likely damaged in the disaster and so it simply could have just malfunctioned. But the only problem I see with these butt dialing malfunction theories is that the phone called a lot of people and a lot of different people. And to me, I feel like if I'm going to butt dial somebody. It's normally just the last person I called. It's actually normally my mum. It won't call a series of different people. It would probably just call the same person. So to me, it seems unlikely that something resting on the phone or leaning on the phone or the phone just malfunctioning in any way would lead to a series of phone calls to a number of different people. I'm just not sure that this explanation works for me. Another theory, similar to the malfunction theory, is that Charles's broken phone could have just called his speed dial list. When this story was posted on Reddit, several users shared creepy stories of their malfunctioning phone. And while the possibility of Charles's phone suffering some kind of technical issue can't be proved because we never found the phone. I don't think it should necessarily be overlooked, but why the phone made a series of calls to several people that Charles was closest to, we may never know. It seems to me almost too convenient that the calls were only made to his closest friends and family. Sort of like the last theory, I think if the phone was going to malfunction, it would call just the last person you called. And I don't think your recently called list would encompass every single person that you are closest to in the world. I think if this happened there would probably be some random calls in there too and it's weird to me that Charles's phone only called his closest family members. That seems more calculated to me. A lot of online users like me weren't really happy with the malfunction theory and so some of them have speculated that another victim in the crash could have found Charles's phone that most probably was flown around the carriage during the crash and was using Charles's phone to send distress signals out just to try to survive. It makes sense that rescuers couldn't find Charles's phone because it wouldn't be near him if he wasn't the one making the calls. And if the person who found it was injured, which is really probable, then that could explain why they weren't able to talk during the calls as well. Or maybe the phone was a bit broken, so the reception wasn't too great. Why the passenger didn't call their own friends and family can also be explained by this theory too. Maybe the phone was just so damaged that the victim wasn't able to type in custom numbers and just had to call the numbers that were programmed into Charles's speed dial. Or maybe the victim was just so injured that they didn't have the strength or the memory to be able to write out individual numbers that they knew. Or, you know, if that was me, I don't know any numbers off by heart. The only number I know off by heart is my mum's. That's because she's had the exact same number since I was born. I would only be able to type in one number. Maybe other people don't 
remember any numbers. It is possible that the rescue team were aware that Charles wasn't making the calls and that it could have been another survivor from the wreckage. But possibly they just didn't have the heart to tell the family members of Charles and to kind of break their hearts. So they let them believe the story that they had concocted about Charles reaching out to be able to comfort them. Obviously this can't be proved, but it is a theory that accounts for the missing phone. So it is interesting to me for that reason. But I have also seen more sinister explanations as to what could have happened to Charles. Some commenters online have speculated that it was in fact Charles that made these calls and that actually Charles was not killed on impact during the crash. Instead, believers of this theory pose the alternative narrative that the rescue team just did not find him on their first sweep of the wreckage, but that Charles was there alive and suffering. So, Charles kept calling his friends and family to let them know that he was still there, to let them know to keep looking for him. But the rescue team took so long to find him that eventually Charles passed away from his injuries. Remember, the last phone call was received an hour before his body was eventually found. Many online believe that to avoid questions and responsibility for Charles's death, rescuers lied about his time of death and hid his phone so that nobody could discover that he was alive and he was the one making the calls after the crash. It also kind of makes it easier for his loved ones to think that Charles died immediately rather than to think that he suffered for all of these hours and could have been saved but ultimately wasn't. Again, there is absolutely no evidence to support this theory but it is one that's considered and I love a good conspiracy theory so I did want to mention it. A more comforting theory and I think the one that most people like to believe is that Charles was making the calls to tell his loved ones not to worry or simply to say goodbye. Maybe Charles took his phone with him to the afterlife like ghosts when they are wearing the clothes that they died in and maybe that's why the phone was never discovered. Since the rescue team were able to trace Charles's calls and locate his body through this tracing, maybe Charles was simply using the phone calls as a way to lead them to his body so that he could be found and his friends and family could get some resolution to this tragedy. But again, since the phone was never found, no one will ever know for sure why and how these phone calls were made. Whether it was due to phone damage or the train rider just reaching out from the beyond, we may never know. But it's nice to believe that even those that have passed may only be a phone call away. Reports of phantom phone calls from the afterlife go back to at least 1967, but Charles Peck's Metrolink death is one of the most prominent stories out there about phone calls from dead people. Quite frankly, I think there's just a bunch of information missing that could explain or point to something other than maybe a cover-up or mismanagement or something paranormal, but it was either never looked into or it was never publicly made available. For example, it would be useful to know whether the people that he called were on his recent calls list. Like I said, I think if my phone was going to malfunction, it would probably call the people that I spoke to last. Were there others on that list, like a bank, a utility company, or doctors? Maybe other random people did get phone calls from Charles, but it was just never reported or nobody ever made a note of it. And we don't know the frequency of the calls and how spaced out they were. Were they all immediately after one another? Were they in 30 minute intervals. That might give us a bit more of an idea of what happened. And a damaged phone could easily make the inputs itself to call numbers on your recent calls list until the battery dies. And this is especially relevant because at this time, phones used the green call button as a shortcut that would take you to your recent 
cordless. So if something is jamming that one green call button, it very likely could just start calling your recent calls list. But we have no answers and we just don't know. We don't have the phone so we can't examine it and we can't look for damage or rule anything out and the coroner's report was not made available so we can't really scrutinize that either and that's all we have for this case please let me know in the comments box below what you think the reason was for these calls do you think it was simply just a technical malfunction or do you think it was supernatural and charles was trying to say goodbye if it's the former the malfunction how do you explain the specific numbers that were called or do you honestly believe that if we found the phone we would see that it wasn't just the specific numbers but these were the only people that reported that they had calls from Charles. Let me know what you think below, I'd love to know and if you like you can let me know of any other cases that you'd like me to cover. If you like this kind of content please like and subscribe, I will be uploading more and that's all from me this week. I will see you in the next one, thank you for watching, bye!